What's up, man? Morning. Well, I mean, well, afternoon. Yeah, it's like six yeah. o'clock. Yeah. yeah. You just trained? What'd you hit? Yep. Uh, some squats and uh, conventional deadlifts. <laughs> what do you? What, what's your conventional at? Uh, I don't know. I just do no, volume. What did, what did you hit today? What did you I hit today? a five by five with six or five. Yeah, it's not weak. Not weak. How's I? Uh, yeah, so you have maxed out your conventional. Uh, I have, it was sometime like last year. I did like eight fifty. Yeah, I was, I was trying. To, I was trying to prove a point. People didn't think I can do conventional yeah. deadlift. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. uh, I've never, I always tell people I've never met a deadlifter. Sumo or conventional is like main stance. They can't do the other one at least within, yeah, you know, half decent, like within ten percent or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, other than like the, there's some people who are just like freaky, like weird builds and shit, but. Um, yeah, similar muscles, similar stuff. Like, sure, like it's gonna carry. My, I working on my sumo at the moment actually, but um, just because it's fun and it's different, and then you get over it. So much better, better left. Yeah, but um, <laughs> but I reckon I'll pull like a good like mid three hundreds with it as well, at least. Hopefully by the end of this, if it doesn't blow up my hips. Yeah. But um, you yeah, you're. you're yeah, sorry. The talking in kilos here. Pounds. Yeah, I mean, that's just 61. I know a certain number of kilos, so I can count up to, yeah, I got you. Yeah, when I competed at Record Breakers, um, it was all in kilos. Put in attempts. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, whatever. I don't know. But it, well, when, I went, when I went over there and like, went around, all the, like, a lot of it was done in kilos still. I was still quite surprised. Um, when I went to hybrid, actually, all the plates were – I was, I was – uh, happy because uh, I could actually load my bar the way I'm used to loading it, and it wasn't I wasn't sitting there with a the calculator like what the fuck. <laughs> Everywhere else, I was mixing plates like I'd chuck on as many like calibrated plates as I could, and then I'd have to like calculate like uh, pound plates and stuff on top of that. You know, like the kilo plates I use at my gym, they're pound plates, but we also have like maybe 300 kilo worth of kilo plates, so well, that's actually kilo, so it's. It's whatever to me. I mean, I can count it, but it's like I've done it so much, like I know what a certain number is. So it's like I know what it looks like on the bar. So it's easy for me to put the weight on. But I still have trouble from time to time. You're uh, all, I, all I see for your posts are just like uh, you know, SPD days or like well, what was what did you say today was? High bar and uh, conventional? No, it was uh, comp squats and uh, conventional deadlifts. Did you? Um, you get much bodybuilding work, much stuff out of that? Yeah, I do. Like, today afterwards, I had upper back, um, some lower back stuff, then I had some core work. So, I do it all the time. I just don't post it. I don't feel like it's necessary at times. Um, I never record yeah, yeah. it, so. Not super exciting. No. I was, I was curious because you said that, I think um, I think we've chatted before. And I'm sure if we chat about a lot of what, where I saw it, you had a pass in like football and stuff. And I grew up playing football and then I did. Um, I don't know, football or soccer? Or sorry. Football. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's Europe. That's Europe. Uh, rugby league in Australia football. Um, gotcha. Or AFL is our football or whatever. Um, similar, you know, athletic, uh, different, running, jumping, whatever. Um, uh, and then I did bodybuilding for a few years. And I felt like it really like built the base, like it set me up. And then I did my first comp um, and broke the the national record in Australia, which is much lower, but whatever. Uh, in the deadlift and that in my first comp, because I, like, I felt like I had like a really good solid base set. Um, you find the same from footy, from, from your football, like playing football and then uh, transferring the skills and and uh, um, set you yeah, up the base. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was always been like super explosive, so it's like I never like in high school we did squats, we did bench, and we did a lot of power clean movements. Um, we never really did deadlifts yeah. huh? unless we were going for a record that was on the board and that had to be <laughs> conventional. So, I mean, I had like the record on the board, but we we never I was trained. Say, it. Surely you had it. <laughs> surely you were well ahead. Yeah, so we we trained trap bar most of the time. Uh, then we. Like I said, when you want to go for the record, you had to do uh, the straight bar. So, but it was nothing that I practiced until I got to college, and I kind of learned how to deadlift. So, I think 
I'm just, I was just looking through the chat and the questions and whatnot, and um, I think some of them disappear if, like, once it gets to a certain amount and that. So if people want to, like, ask questions and using the actual question little thingy, um, that would be useful because otherwise they just, uh, from what I can tell, they just kind of, they go off the screen and then they eventually just get, like, I've already yeah, lost you got, you scroll. Um, does deadlift on the stiff bar carry well over to speed off the floor with the deadlift bar? Um, yes and no. You still have to, the deadlift bar is a skill. It's not something you can just jump into and get the most out of it. Um, when I first used the deadlift bar, my best pull was 830. But before that, my best pull on a stiff bar was 805. So I had to, over time, after using deadlift over and over, I learned how to use my leverages. Well, I learned how to use it to my advantage. And I eventually got better at it. Then I did a meet. I trained on the that left bar for like two months. Then after that, my best pull was 865. So yeah. it's just something you have to learn how to use, like anything. Yeah, I did. Uh, when I had my first powerlifting meet, I uh, I had I was training in a place uh, in a city that didn't really have powerlifting gyms or anything like that, and um, so I didn't even know I didn't know pal I didn't know deadlifting bars existed. I didn't know they were a thing. So I was just deadlifting on what I thought was just, you know, it was just a bar. And, uh, and then I remember I, I wanted to deadlift 300. That was like my ultimate goal at this comp. I wanted to deadlift 300 kilos. I'm like a really, like, if I did lift 300 kilos, I'm going to be fucking over the moon. And then I got there. I was nervous. I think I was opening like 280 or something. And, and I remember my last warm up, which must have been like 260 something, just like almost throwing it, you know, like it was a joke. And I'm yeah. just like, what the fuck like is something in the water here like is it <laughs> like i swear to god this is like honestly like easy like, i don't know what the hell's going on and then i smashed my opener i smashed through my second which was 300 even though it was planned to be a third then i smashed i think 315 and then and then they let me take a fourth attempt because it was just like well, i don't know i don't know what that's going on. so i ended up yeah 25 and a half kilos over um what I played, like my ultimate third, yeah, just because. But I guess, uh, like you said, it's definitely a bit of a skill, definitely a bit to get used to that whip. But the, if I look back at my old videos before I even started powerlifting, like I was, uh, uh, they're all conventional, and so I think that makes a little bit of difference. But um, I was quite good at building tension through the bar back then, so I felt like it wasn't that big of a transition for me because, like, I was already building that tension through a stiff bar, and it was just like yeah. okay, now that tension just brings me whatever, that far, a bit higher, and it just makes it that bit easier. So I didn't have that much uh, adaption to it, but... Um, it's different yeah. for sumo. Yeah, for sumo, yeah, it, it, it changed your back angle, uh, that, that bit different. And yeah. Especially you with... it and not over-pull. Once you over-pull, you can throw yourself off balance. So you have to kind of counterbalance your, your body with the bar to allow you to get the best benefit out of it. Did you um? Did you notice the difference between bars, like a Texas bar versus like an Ohio bar type thing? Yeah. yeah. The bars at my gym, I'm not saying they're shitty, but they're not the best bar. So it's like, if I can use those bars to pull on, I can use any bar. So it doesn't really bother me. Like I don't go to the gym looking for a specific bar. I just we have like we have some Della bars that has no name, but they're Della bars. So I mean, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. As long as I can grip it, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Uh, your thoughts on training on well, a stiff, stiff bar question is coming through. Training on stiff bar and then going through a comp that uses a deadlift bar, potential catch you off guard. Bang, just got through that. What are the chances of two of the almost the same question starting off? <laughs> if you're going to put on a load of plates and to get used to using deadlift bar so you control the whip. <laughs> <laughs> um, with the Dells bar, it's just more about your start position. Learn how to. Like most people fuck up when they don't know how to start. It's all about how you start and you finish well. So, if you can start in a good position, then you'll finish in a good position. So, to, I tell people emphasize the start, focus on your start, like perfect that, then your finish should be flawless. It's just so you don't have to really worry about the whip too much if you learn how to be in a better position to start off and pull all the slack out the bar. And if you don't, then the bar is going to end up pulling you back down. So, mm. Yeah, I noticed that when I competed over there with Kayla, obviously he's really aggressive in the way he pulls. Um, 
uh, and he and he on his opener, he, I think it was his opener, he, uh, he hit yeah. it, and then like the little bit of whip off the floor, like nailed him, and then he was like a little bit of a yeah. um, like a stall. And then once he regathered that balance, once he got back on his heels, once he got, uh, it was just like fucking easy. Yeah, his ability to grind is crazy. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> if my if yeah. my pull isn't smooth, then I might lose it. I can't grind. Yeah, I noticed even your what was that last one? You, uh, the hybrid one you did? Um, the yeah, nine seventy one. The third was was pretty similar to the first. Like if you watch the videos, you wouldn't be like, "Wow, that's a fucking hard third. Yeah. But um, I've noticed that with my sumo guys as well. Like you get to it, you're like, "Holy shit, that was easy." Looking at the video, but then put on ten kilos more, whatever, and it's like it's just not there. Lose position, throws you off. Yeah. Same for you, same for you. You know, it's like there's just like a sticking, like a a point where it just like a, you, one rep's easier than the next one's just not there. Yeah. What made you two get in powerlifting? I got in powerlifting. Um, my, I was an undergrad. I was just kind of training. Like, you know, like, I wanted to be a bodybuilder, but I didn't ever want to lose weight. So I just kept on. I was like in a primal bulk. I just kept on gaining weight, getting bigger and stronger. Um, one of my buddies started powerlifting, and uh, he's like, hey, man, you should be really strong. You should try it out. I'm like, okay. I signed up for a meet. I was two weeks out. Went and did the meet. One best lifter. Um and it was like, mind you, at the time I was like 21. You know, I think I was 21. So I was still a junior. Um, and like, yeah, man, you should, you're really strong. You should go do nationals. I ended up going doing nationals. Uh, got me a coach in the meantime. The nationals got second in the juniors, which is, I believe, 19 to 21. And I got fifth in the open. And that was my second meet ever. And mind you, for my first meet, I didn't even prep for it. I just kind of. Went and did some numbers, and I ended up uh, putting up a 16, 13 total. Um, and that was a really subpar meet with no nothing, like no experience whatsoever. I just kind of threw numbers out there and expecting, like, I went nine for nine, and I just I just hit those numbers. Um, like, but then after Nationals, I figured, like, hey, I'm actually good at this. Might as well continue doing it. So I've been doing it ever since, and now it's in 2016. Well, like I said, I said, Mine was in twenty, early twenty fifteen was my first meet, and it um, I'd done a few years of bodybuilding stuff before, so kind of went in, I guess, uh, knowing where I was at a bit more, and um, yeah. and I just had to basically just get good at one RMs, you know, like I was already fairly strong through everything through wet work through um, through bodybuilding, and then it was just getting that skill up, and getting used to to uh lifting one rm and uh and then from there went to do nationals and then pro raw and then it's pretty much just been pro raw after pro raw ever since until you know, hopefully i can head over there i'm looking at doing the uh i was looking at doing the hybrid one at the end of this year um coming up yeah oh yeah i heard but it, yeah it's a shame it got shot so now uh, it'll be warriors which is the 115 to our class of big dogs here uh and then, um, and then hopefully I can do Kratos next year if they bring it back. I think it's going to be one of those events where they're going to start doing it every year. Um, they use like every meet I've been to with them. They've been putting on a great show. So I was like, if I get invited, then I'm gonna do it. But um, it all depends on the time frame. I suppose he's doing the showdown meet up in uh, New York. Um, the big, it's like the current, but it's for raw lifters. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully I can go there and put up some good numbers. But um, if if that meet doesn't go as planned, then I will definitely jump into another meet right away, just so I can hit the numbers I want to hit by the end of the year. Um, but it all depends on how much time is in between each meet. So, do I like, like in Australia? We don't um, have the prize money is not big for really any meet. Do you take into consideration the the prize money when you pick meets? Considering some of the comps over there are pretty decent. Um, now yes, but most of the Money meets are for guys and raps. Um, I don't see myself competing in raps anytime soon. So this is the only big raw meet that I can go to and win some money from. So why not go and do something? And hopefully they can make it a yearly thing where they do it every year. That's only what, makes you the, what makes you not want to wear raps? 
Because really, like, you just doing, like, real soft and, and compete and win that money. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I just feel like it's my sleep. Yeah, I tried it one time in the gym, but it's, like, it wasn't really my cup of tea. And it's, like, my that gym session took me, like, five hours. I'm, like, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, that's what people ask me about wearing suits and stuff. And I'm, like, man, like, raps take long enough, like, in between. Like, it take me five, ten minutes just to, like, kind of – get everything together to do a yeah. set and then the session drags out for hours like you said so I can't even imagine doing like geared lifting where it's like trying yeah. to get into a suit and out of a suit and fucking all that so it's a bit you know, impractical so yeah if I hit all the numbers I want to hit in September then I, someone keep questioning like the 502 deadlift <laughs> if, if, listen if if I hit all the numbers I want to hit in powerlifting this year right now then I'll put on a, a deadlift suit and I'll put, get some scraps, and I'll train for the 502. I feel like I can do it. It's just one of those things where it's like I need more incentive. Like, I don't have the, like, like Thor maybe made, like, 100K off that one pull. Like, no, you got to remember that it's, like, a, you know, it's a song, man, thing. And, yeah. and all that stuff. So there's probably a lot more money than whatever the more the fame all that stuff you know what i mean yeah so but my thing is is like even if i pull a sumo that's i'm the that's that's crazy like it's it's 1100 yeah. pounds regardless so it's like do i still am i the quote-unquote deadlift king because i have i, I if a deadlift is pick it up put it down off the ground that's that's the definition yeah. of a deadlift so it's like Technically, I I will pick up the most weight, and I will put down the most weight. So I was like, "You'll have my hey. vote. You'll have my vote for the deadlift king." All right. <laughs> and and you, it's not like people aren't saying too much cheating now, anyway. So fucking, may as well make it. <laughs> like, I mean, I get shit. I get shit all the time for you. Like, no, nah, that's that's strong man for power. And maybe yeah, you can be quote unquote the best deadlift forever, but. Dora will have the best. I mean, nah, fuck you. Uh, I'm going to do it regardless. <laughs> I still pull more. Dora weighed like 200, like, was it two, 205 kilos? Yeah. He was, he, was, he was 450 pounds. Yeah, he had a round, round face. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, sheesh. That was yeah. God talking to my back. I don't think, uh, like, strongman is in strongman, strongman, like, they're, they're actually doing strongman's. I think it'd be fun, but it's definitely not on my list as far as something that's. Those guys are massive, dude. Like, four, <laughs> six, nine, 450 pounds. Um, the weight six... class is tough, for sure. Like, going from 105 kilos to open is just like, fuck. Um, but it's I'm a whole new sport. Like, it's a whole new thing to get good at. I don't think people, like, sure, the strength carries over to some degree, but it's another thing that you have to kind of just switch gears, change directions. You're back at the bottom of the pool type thing. Um, but no, not on, not on my list. I feel like I get hurt doing that. Yeah, yeah, that would be a worry for me. That'd be a worry for me for sure. Uh, by the way, let's see. Had to stop. Had to stop knees being over the bar at sumo start position. Bar keeps running into my knees. Um, yeah, what you said with being the change of start position, <laughs> like, like just. <laughs> What you can do is, well, I tell people, like, when you first start, if you, depending on what type of bar you use, like on a deadlift bar, I tell people you can push your knees over the bar just a tad bit, but yep. move the weight in front of your shin so that way you can have the path of least resistance on mm -hmm. the way up. Um, it, it's going to run in your knees regardless, but at the same time, that's why you use baby powder. Like, I have scars on the inside of my knees from when the bar hits every time, so, and it bleeds every session, and there's nothing I can do about it because that's what the bar hits, so. Um, yeah. yeah, it's it's a tough one. It's like a, without seeing the deadlifts, so maybe send send through some videos, some shit. We can help out a bit more. Yeah. Uh, ba ba When are you throwing the suit? You said that. <laughs> I'm six foot. I'm six foot five eleven. Somewhere between there. I've been the same height since the eighth grade, so I haven't grown. <laughs> just got wider. I'm just under. It's uh, 5'11 uh, for me at 115 at the moment in kilos. So I can, um, you'd be similar, right? 115. Uh, am I 258, 258 pounds? I don't know how much that is in kilos. Similar. 
uh, 242 is 110, so yeah, 115 ish. I'm not going to 275 though. <laughs> no, it's no. a pretty big jump. I've tried, uh, it's hard to, I, I, I don't know, I'm struggling to put on the weight to fill it out. Uh, my, my deadlift sets at a higher weight, like I can't lock out so. Like my deadlift is better when I'm like two forty five, two fifty ish. Yeah. Um, Your legs just get in the way, or you just you like not yeah. worry about the muscle. When I when I gain weight, my quads gain size, so I hold a lot of water in my legs. So it sucks. How how strong was I in the eighth grade? I was weak. <laughs> I was I was one hundred and thirty pounds going into high school. Like I was small. I was just tall and lanky. And when am I going to take Benny's powerlifting record? Um, if this meet, if this meet goes as planned in September, um, I'm playing a third. Like I want to go eight eight five one k. That'd be twenty three hundred at two forty two. I feel like that's possible with the numbers I've been putting up in training right now. Even been like twenty plus weeks, but I think my twenty nineteen weeks out. Um, and then WRPF, you can take a fourth attempt deadlift if he's going for a record or something done, I might try it. Um, it all depends on the day. Um, like, I, I feel like I could have done it at the hybrid meet, like the way the atmosphere was. Like, I could have taken the fifth attempt. So, it's just, it's all about feel. I just, if it's there that day, then I'll take it that day or I can just wait. You make me uh, want to go over there and do that. I'm, I'm <laughs> Dennis devastated that it uh, that that crate has got shut down. I really, really wanted to do that. Um, not to say that uh, big dogs and warriors won't be amazing as well. But um, when I was over there and I just popped in to train uh, at when we were uh, holidaying and, and stuff there, it was just such a good gym, such a good vibe, such good people. Just really, I, I know they'll put on a good bit, you know. Like it was one of those things yeah. where I'm like, these guys just don't half art shit. They, they they go all out every time. Um, There's a few in the actual question thing here too as well. So, uh, like, do you think you should train? Well, it should come up. Oh, look at that. Uh, do you think you should train opposites deadlift wise? You just said you just come out of a conventional session like just now. I mean, um, it depends. So, I say if you're a mainly sumo puller, then yes, you should train your conventional, but. I don't know about the other way around because I don't know how much that carries over. I'm, I don't have experience in that. Um, I've, uh, I think it's valuable still because, I mean, it's going to train different ranges, um, slightly different muscle groups, things like that. Uh, I usually, uh, as you're doing right now, train both at the same time when I'm mixing them anyway. And then as I get closer to me, like the sumo will drop out for me and I'm assuming yeah. your conventional will kind of piss off close yeah. to me as well. Um, but yeah, I enjoy training both, and I think it's valuable to train both. I think it's, uh... and it, it also depends on how expensive of a lifter you are. Um, with you, you probably practice good technique as well. But most people who just switch over to uh, sumo, they have terrible technique, and they don't practice those things necessary to get better at conventional with the sumo pool. They just kind of do a a conventional sumo, which is well, at time actually, like, well, a lot of people. I feel like want to change too soon because they they they're not good at conventional or they yeah. or whatever. And I've never met somebody who is crap at uh, conventional that's suddenly like amazing at sumo. You know what I mean? Like they're they're still yeah. dead. They're still I think they're way more similar than what people think. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you still have to build a lot of attention to the bar. Like all the principles that go into making a deadlift a good lift are still going to be uh still going to be similar. So, um, so I don't think running away from a conventional deadlift is uh, is the way. <laughs> yeah. uh, what else we got? Hey, Caleb, man, I, I see you, <laughs> my little brother. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my younger sister once got kicked off one of my meet uh, live feeds. Um, <laughs> like off the official live feed, not off like a live thing that I was streaming yeah. because she, uh, she just spammed it. <laughs> How many days should you rest before a meet? Um, it all depends on your training. For me, I 
say maybe two days off. Like I'm still like before the hybrid meet, I was still doing sets of eight, like like four or five days out. So I was like, that's just how I train. Everyone doesn't train the same, so it's it's some it's a personal preference. Where was that? I met uh, David first. Um, mine was. I'm only uh, like when we're talking full rest, I only take a few days off. Yeah, I don't. I don't like to because you can get under like detrain if you take too many days off. Like the way I did my meet, like I I did like a test meet in between like I was like eight or ten weeks out. I did a test session and training where I just kind of went in like went in training, maxed out on the squat bench and deadlift, um, put up a twenty one ninety total in the gym. So um, it just kind of replicated everything I did for that session going into the meet and. I had a great day. If it's working, if it's working, it's working. I, I, f I feel like sometimes people um, will like, try to follow like the textbook as in like, you know, you should deload for this long and you should do this for this long and blah, blah, blah for this long. Like, yeah, then if, you just take, if you're taking in your data as in like if you're taking in like how long it takes you to recover, how long it takes you, like all that sort of stuff, I feel like um, then it is just kind of another week. Then it's just planning like for your day to be to be good in that way uh what do you think are important accessories for the deadlift um the deadlift itself you can never like <laughs> most people try to do every accessory to get better at the lift but until you're under a certain load then you never know what that load feels like so i mean you can do your back accessory you can do your lower body accessories but if you don't know how to move the weight efficiently, then you're not going to get the most out of your deadlift. So being practicing technique, fixing your technique is the number one thing. And being as, as efficient as possible is what's going to help your deadlift out. So you, like you said, I guess you can count like conventional as like a, an accessory, you sumo as a way. What you've done, yeah. you've done, obviously. What do you do like stiff legs, pauses, deficits, anything like that? I don't know. Um, my like my best my favorite accessory for the deadlift is pause deadlift. So it's it's keeping the accessory within the movement itself. So it's like for me, pause deadlift, even though it's like time and attention, but I use it more to focus on control technique and a control uh, timing. Like I try to time everything like within my lockout. So it's like I try to lock out my knees, hips, and shoulders all at the same time, and that creates for a powerful lockout. Um, it just one of those things I focus on. Uh, most people don't focus on those things. It kind of pull and, oh, I need like on my knees, then like on my back. But it's like I try to break it down. I go back and look at the footage in between sets, and I'll fix it in that set. So it's like it's one of those, like, that's what I do. So I don't know. Yeah, my being conventional, it's um, deficits and uh, some – at the moment, it's actually like just lighter touch stuff. Like I said, I'm doing sumo a little bit at the moment, but there's nothing like really big, like away from deadlifts. Like it's a, the variations aren't crazy. They're like, it's just like you said, like slight little, slight variations of. I've been training for powerlifting since 2016. Before that, I played football. So I guess I, I trained then too as well, but it wasn't for powerlifting movements. Still training to be powerful and explosive, and yeah, you don't you don't do any of that stuff anymore. Not really. Um, last time I tried to do something, like I do, I still do like box jumps here and there, um, but all the other stuff like power and stuff like that kind of cut that out. Like last time I tried to do anything like athletic, like really <laughs> athletic, I was a uh, sprinting, uh, racing one of the guys at uh, Georgia State where I was interning at, ended up pulling a hamstring. <laughs> and, I was from, and I was like five or six weeks out from boss of bosses. So that was terrible. I, I couldn't have walked for like a week. It's not <laughs> it was it. terrible. Nah, it's not worth it. Well, what, what way were you when you played football last? Um, my senior year in high school, I was 205. Like I was, I, didn't, I was smaller back then. So. Yeah, so you put on 20 kg or whatever, whatever, yeah. 40, 40, 50 pounds. And that's within a five, six year span. I've been hovering between like 230 to like 250 for the longest. So and then I, I gain weight right now because it's like holiday season. I eat a lot of food. So 
Yeah. Jeez, we're getting in now. <clears throat> you stretch a lot? Uh, not really. Uh, yeah, mine's I don't even know. Stretching is not necessary. Um, I don't think you need it. You are. <laughs> so many people ask me about uh, Thor's <laughs> Thor deadlifts. So, is that just like the common thing that gets thrown at you every single day? Yeah, I mean, I haven't really, I say something like, I said something like the other day after he did it, then um, I, I put it, like, after he made his post, I put a post, like, with my 1015, like, hey, I, I don't have a devil suit on, so I was like, I can do 1015, This and that was after Boss of Bosses. I was, like, two days out, and um, so it was, like, well, two two days after competing, a full meet, I flew back, and I did that, so it was, like, if I can do that, not really fresh, imagine what I can do if I actually train for it, you know? Mm. Was it big Jordan? Jordan's got a tick, so we have to listen to him. Can you um, talk about the overspeed principle that carry over to your deadlift training? Um, yeah. So, such as like when you play when you play football, right? Like we, when I was in high school, we did flying forties, which was we would sprint down the hill, and it, when you meet the line, that's when they start timing you. So it's like if you can accelerate into a certain like point, then you can like I don't know how to explain. It. Like you accelerate to a certain point, it's like a over, it's like overload training for anything. Like you use bands, um, you can use like change. Some people use chains in their lifting. Like for me, what I did to get stronger was I use straps, and I would do like a like most people is like you do like steps. It's like you do like weeks of threes, then like after that, and then your week or three, like a week of three RP of eight would be like your your doubles um, RP of like six or seven. If that makes sense, you would do yeah. the same way. So then, then you do singles. But I would, I would, we would take singles out, and I would do overload singles. Yeah. So that way, I would be Get pushing one ten to one fifteen percent of my deadlift mats. Then after that week, I would go back to regular singles. Yeah. And just and just try to hone in on those. Then my numbers end up being higher than expected because. I got used to heavier weight, and I don't know if you ever watched Thor's video about it's the what's this shit called? What's the word? The superhuman strength, like when you know when people like go through like catastrophic events, and like people can lift cars up. All oh, right, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yep. So it, it, tra it trains your nervous system to be stronger than what it what it has to be. So, and most people is like you can like answer like a hundred times stronger than their body. And it's like, what is the human, like the human body is capable of? And like, no one really knows because it hasn't really been studied like that because you can't really study that aspect of the mind. So if you can train your nervous system to be stronger, that's where most of your strength comes from in the first place. That's those are your main adaptations you get from training. So it's like, then after that, then if you gain muscle, then you get that much stronger. Like you see guys like a John Hack benching, low 500s consistently like he doesn't have all the muscle mass in the world of a, a julius maddox but he's, he's he's strong as hell but that's just because his nervous system is able to handle the load and not be shot and it's getting used the right muscles to i said contractility i don't know the right word but it's, it, it's a lot to go into it's not, it hasn't been studied but it's a, it's a lot do you still uh you still do that these days? You said you, um, you made it sound like past tense there, like you still doing that. I haven't done it because it's like it's not really a was it <laughs> research topic. Like you can't, there's no research behind it. So it's like how why should I keep doing that? Like I I eventually got to the point where my body started like kind of break down from all the heavy weight work uh, weight I was doing. So I kind of scaled back and trained a little bit smarter. But at the time, that's when I did the. Uh, the 900 for five, that was like last year when I was at the Arnold. And that's <laughs> when I was kind of training that way. And I, that's when I also ended up pulling 1,005 in the gym as well. And that was right after that. Yeah, I've, I've read some things. I might turn you some stuff after, some books or whatever. But it's, it's like, it's, any, it's one of the basic principles of strength training, which is the overall principle. Um, 
just taking it away from a, a squat or a, a vertical jump. Like when people do vertical jumps, they put like a weighted vest on. They do like five vertical jumps, take the weighted vest off, and you actually can jump a little bit higher or you feel like you can jump higher. But in reality, you maybe an inch or so. But it's like, <laughs> but even that to an elite person, like a guy with like a 45 inch vertical, if you can train that and get one inch out of that, that's that's a lot. Like that's a lot. yeah. Well, um, yeah, it'd be interesting to uh, keep telling it. <laughs> Your brother's still posting on his stuff. Yeah, I see him. <laughs> but, <laughs> How many I'm calories? Are you? Right now, man, like thirty-two hundred. Damn. <laughs> see, I have to eat like like five five thousand at least to like maintain and then I'm at like six thousand now trying to push it up because like yeah, like I'm trying to um if I eat that much I would gain like twenty pounds. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 broken. It just doesn't <laughs> like I tried to push to two seventy five for pro raw um this year and then I got to I think like one twenty two like really like really forcing it like doing everything I could and then uh uh like I lost it so fast, like with all this stress and stuff that came from coronavirus, and obviously like I wasn't eating as much and all that, and then all of a sudden I'm back at one seventeen or whatever. So I hate people like you. <laughs> I, I if I stress out, I gain five pounds. So it was like, I well, it's good and bad. The pros and cons, man. Like, yeah, like it's good because I can stay lean without uh, much effort at all. Like I don't even have to worry about that. But then when it comes, like I said, when it comes to gaining weight, when it comes to really pushing things up, then it's like, it, it's tough, you know? So there's definitely, um, uh, there's, there's pros and cons to it. Um, the dwarf here. Man. Would you rather smoke or drink? I'd rather smoke. I'm not really a drinker for personal reasons. <laughs> there's more there's questions in the question question thingy I can't see those oh you can't no nah, only you can see them I'll put them up yeah. what are my thoughts on Larry Wills he's a good guy he's showing me nothing but respect have you I met him I met him a couple times oh, um, that's right. yeah, yeah. Okay. I never yeah. competed with him but I, I've met him at the same meet I've never Not competed with him oh okay fuck thought he did uh yeah i don't think he's ever been to australia so he's not i have no opinion <laughs> talk to raw delators currently in your opinions um myself uh with becky i don't know if you know what that is and yes. uh kayla oh Man, they're, they're all stuff that we've, uh, we've hit, we've been over. The most consistent lifter in my opinion is Yuri. But this Dell, if he pulls nine every meet, so it's nothing you can say to him. Tell us your uh, hook grip secrets. Um, you picked it up pretty quick. Like, I noticed it was like one meet, you were like struggling a bit, and then the next one it was fine. So, I mean, obviously, you picked it up real quick. Yes and no. Like, it took me a while. Like, after Boss of Bosses, I'm, like, I didn't really emphasize, like, the squat. I mean, I did emphasize the squat and the virus, but my main focus was fixing my grip and having a, a great deadlift, like, uh, meet right after that. So, after Boss of Bosses, I just focused on hook grip, down and then um, I maybe got the hang of it maybe, like, 10 to 11 weeks out. And after that, my t I just had to change up my technique and because I wasn't supposed to pull. I would just go down one, two, and get ready to pull. But I had to um, go back and kind of change how I started, and I finally figured it out. Yeah. If you found that right position, and then it was just, like, clicked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I talked to you. I mean, I don't really talk to him, but, I mean, me. Comes to my lives, and I was live streaming. Um, every time I met him, he just always came up to me, and said, "Hey, how you doing?" Like I believe it that we was at Boston Bosses, and I was sitting in the back, and he came over there, gave me a pop tart, and he was trying to help me fix my grip <laughs> and everything. So 
he's a pretty cool guy, man. I haven't really like got to really talk to him, so it's like I don't know what to tell you. And Yuri doesn't really talk much English. Yeah, he apparently he's super super serious competitor when you compete with him. I, I he competed here at the at the big dogs, but I was over over there in America at the time, so I didn't get to meet him. Yeah, he's, he's a cool guy. My secret? I don't really have a secret to the hook grip. I use three fingers and grow your thumbnails. As you can see. Um, <laughs> it just it just helps to so I can get three, four fingers on my thumb. It's more secure that way. Um some people use two. I can't use two. I don't feel really secure in that way. Does that mean that your first finger is like right back at the knuckle type thing? Yeah. Like, fit three fingers on there like you'd be because right. it's like, oh no, it's fine. Because it's like your fingers, each finger help, like engages different muscles in your, you know, like your forearm and stuff like that, and your your bicep. So if you can really get this, I, I this is the first thing I put on my my thumb. Then I do the other two things. And hopefully, like, they fall in line. But I, I have like a super tight grip. I don't really let the bar hang in my fingers like some people do. It's it's deep in my hand, and it's, I'm not letting go. Yeah. No, no, when I, I think I spoke, when I spoke to Kayla, uh, record breakers, he was saying that it's just, he just does, I think it was middle finger on, uh, like there, and then that one just kind of hangs off. Yeah, so when you can grow your thumb now, you can actively get all three fingers on there, and the, 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 the ring finger can go all the way over your thumbnail, so. I look forward to seeing everybody pal with me, which is gigantic thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> just, just walking around stabbing people. Listen, don't ask me any questions about bench. I don't know how to bench. Ask that guy. <laughs> Scary bench. Are you uh, you you're up, you have wide wide grip benching? No, I'm like ring finger on the ring right now. Uh, any wider, my my I have like pec uh, pec pain, so okay. I don't really go too wide and eat more inside than I have shoulder pain. So it's like, it's one or the other. I have to kind of get the happy medium in between. Did the pec pain come from like a previous thing or was it like a, just a just overload, like an over, overuse type thing in that position? Well, in doesn't... order to get better at bench, you have to increase frequency. So right now I'm benching three days a week. Yeah. Um, last prep I was doing four days a week. So it's like, they're not all heavy, but it's like, it's what you have to do to get stronger. So. Yeah. yeah, I'm at three times a week at the moment as well. It uh, but I think one tire rep, one's heavy, one's kind of like control Accessory. technique type thing, like like long pauses, slow eccentrics, something like that. Um, yeah, health near deadlift in a way. What's your deadlift frequency? Uh, I'm assuming this changes, but if we talk right now, it's, twice a, it's, it's always been twice a week. I've never deadlifted more than that. So right now it's what well, sumo and conventional, and then closer to doing either be sumo and pause sumo or something like that. Pause, yeah. yeah. Sounds. <laughs> ben the barger and bench press, yeah, that was your thing. Uh, is it possible to hook up with small hands? Yes. When I, when I compared, because like I was curious about how like with. Uh, with Kayla record breaking, I compared my hand to his and we were the exact same size. Um, it's not that I have small hands, uh, but I wouldn't say I have huge hands. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, if there's any more you want to um, um, jump on, switch from the next grip to hook grip. Um, it all depends on the person. I mean, you can switch over and be fine right away, but you have to learn how to use your technique with the hook grip. Um, it changes everything, how you approach the bar and all that. So if you have to change your approach, then you have to kind of slow down a little bit and dial it back a little bit. Do I think I can pull 900 conventional? I don't plan to, so. Surely you'd, you'd have to like uh, change the training to be fully around that to get that and it would waste or well, would not waste but it would it would take time out of your year it would take time out of your, your progress i guess i don't i don't do it because it's like 
it, it hinders your, your squat progress. Like, you can't have a decent squat progression along with conventional deadlift progression because the two, like, kind of balance each other. And you can't really do both at the same time. You can only you can do one or the other. Oh, I mean, I mean, I don't do anything for a living right now. I'm, I'm in college. I'm getting my master's. I made sure to do that. I'm getting my master's in sports self science with a concentration in exercise science. When do you finish that? Uh, this summer. I got like two more classes and I'll be done. Hey, right. that's going to be exciting. Yeah. I wanted to be a collegiate strength coach, but that job is kind of unstable. So, like, I don't know where I'm going to go after that and just kind of get a degree since I started it. Yeah, let's see where it takes you. Hopefully I can become a full-time powerlifter. You know, like Larry Willis. Hey, with weights, well, be strong well one, one hand, <laughs> content creators. Yeah. You would. yeah. But that'd be cool. That's, that's, that's what I would like to count as like what a, like a, almost like what a pro powerlifter is when you can like live off it, even if it's not from powerlifting itself, it kind of is. Sponsorships, online coaching, a little stuff here and there. <clears throat> All righty, we'll, uh, we'll wrap this up if, um, if there's nothing you yeah. want to jump on. It's been on. an hour already? I don't, I don't see any more questions, really. I just hit 48, 50 yeah. minutes. We'll, um, yeah, but if uh, if you want to... Who in a fight? Um, <laughs> probably him. He played rugby, so those guys are ruthless. They hit you with no body, no... They, those many... I think it would be who would tear their the tear something fast. <laughs> I've always said that if somebody, if I ever got in a fight like these days at this weight, it would be like, all right, I'm jumping in for just to tackle the guy and then just, like, sit on him because... <laughs> I, don't, I don't have the stamina to go around, like, run around and chase people anymore, so... <laughs> That's, it. It. That's it. And it would be, um... Yeah, I'm not throwing punches, so... <laughs> It'd be it'd be a tackle and and, ho and just a hug. <laughs> All right, uh, cool. We'll uh, we'll leave there. We'll wrap it up. Um, there's more coming in. Yeah, we'll be here for hours. If have, yeah, if you have questions, like feel free to DM me. Um, sometimes I answer them. Sometimes I don't. Depend on the question. Um, so yeah. yeah, for sure. All right, cool. Um, no, good chat to man. It was uh, uh yeah. It's awesome to have you on and awesome to answer some of those questions. Um, it, Hold on, do, do you have any questions for me? Not in particular. It was, uh, you know, a bunch of the stuff that we know. It was, it was really, um, I, 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 I really like watching your training because it, it to me, it, it's, uh, it shows, like, it's very consistent. It's thought out. Um, like, it's, uh, I can tell, like, it's, it's, smart like a lot of thoughts going into to to building a good progression so when i see other some other lifters that are like right up top of the chain and they're doing stuff that just seems kind of it just ran i just can't work it out but for you I, I love watching it and seeing how it just um it makes sense to me uh so so yeah i was just uh just interested just to to hear all that stuff about the yeah, my yeah, coach. The and the football and the side and where it came from and all that kind of stuff. That that's the interesting stuff to me. Is this? Um, yeah, I mean, powerlifting. It's everybody. Everybody at that top level is fairly similar with technique and and you know, training the lifts frequently and stuff like that. It's just a, it's just the slight little thing. So, yeah. Gotcha. All right. Cool. Well, uh, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you again soon. All right, man. Cool. Peace.